What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. Just got back from a wonderful breakfast with Mrs. Quartering. It is her birthday today. She's uh, doing okay. You know, the ladies, sometimes they have a, a rough time getting older. I suppose men do too. After all, there is the whole trope of a dude going out and buying a Harley on his 40th birthday. But uh, we had a nice breakfast, and uh, she's currently at the dog park with the puppy, enjoying her time. Uh, so wish her a happy birthday in the comments. Leave a like and uh, send her some kind words. She must be a saint to have been with me for so long. Now, Disney uh, is uh, getting called out by actual people that attend the park uh, for uh, wokeness and how it's ruining the experience for them. Now, of course, Twitter is completely dogpiling on this person for daring to share their opinion that they don't like all the uh, politically correct uh, changes that Disney is making. And certainly that's his right. Uh, Twitter is full of vile people making fun of his physical appearance and all sorts of stuff like that. You know, these people don't actually go to the park anyway. Uh, I agree that Disney is spending way too much time on getting woke. Uh, what they should be spending more time on is their daily skincare routine, which brings me to this video's sponsor, Geology. Huge shout out to this video sponsor, Geology. Listen, fellas, I know you're probably not thinking about your skincare routine very frequently, but I promise you, you should be. Geology reached out and got me educated on a lot of the important benefits of skincare for men. A simple skincare routine formulated for daily use, personalized for your skin and the benefits you want to see. Great for individuals with sensitive skin, acne, dark eye circles, or wrinkles. How does it work? Well, you take their 30 second diagnostic quiz and they formulate a regimen that provides the benefit your skin needs the most, whether that's to reduce dark and puffy eyes. That's what I'm going to use mine for. Fight acne, keep oily skin under control, protect your skin and reduce fine lines and wrinkles. You start with a complete trial set. Their products work best as a set. So start with a 30 day trial of all four products, the everyday face wash, vital morning face cream, repairing night cream, and the nourishing eye cream. Geology has over 3,000 five-star reviews with an average customer rating of 4.7 out of five. Head over to geology.com and take their free skincare quiz and save up to 40% off on your first 30 days trial or just click the link below. Hey, give it a try, fellas. Look, nice skin is not just a thing for the ladies and ladies out there who are watching, maybe pick some up for your man. Now, this article written by Jonathan uh, was, is in the Orlando Sentinel said, I love Disney World, but wokeness is ruining the experience. My family and I have been loyal Disney customers for decades. We vacation at Disney World every year. We take a Disney cruise every year or two. Consequently, we spend way too much money in Orlando. Unfortunately, I'm strongly rethinking our commitment to Disney and thus Orlando. The more Disney moves away from the values and vision of Walt Disney, the less Disney World means to me. Disney is forgetting that guest immersion is at the core of its business model. When I stand in Galaxy's Edge or Fantasy's World, I know I'm in a theme park, but through immersion and my willingness to set the real world aside, something magical happens. The spell is broken when the immersive experience is shattered by the real world, and oh boy, has Disney been breaking the immersion. Recently, Disney announced that cast members are now permitted to display tattoos, wear inclusive uniforms, and display inclusive haircuts. Disney did all this in the name of allowing cast members to express themselves. The problem is, I'm not traveling across the country and paying thousands of dollars to watch someone I don't know express themselves. I'm there for the immersion and the fantasy, not the reality of a stranger's self-expression. This is actually... A, I mean, hey... I've been to Disney maybe four times in my whole life. You know, when I grew up, we didn't have a lot of money. Uh, and my family, it was a big deal for us to go to Disney. We went to Disney once. And then as an adult, uh, I took my wife once. Uh, so actually, maybe maybe two, maybe three times. Maybe I'm forgetting one time that I went. Um, so I understand where he's coming from. You go there to escape. What this article, in his opinion, is really about escapism. He says, I do not begrudge these people their individuality, and I wish them the well in their personal lives. But I do not get to express my individuality at my place of business. Uh, what's next? Is Disney going to end up 
end the rule barring st on stage cell phone use by cast members as an infringement on self expression. More broadly, like many corporations, Disney has been politicizing its business. Full disclosure, I am a Christian and a conservative Republican, so the people who run Disney and I do not see eye to eye. Regardless, corporations have always made politically motivated decisions. Usually it's due to the desire to make profit, but sometimes it's due to the values of the people in the corporation. While Disney uses corporation to express his patriotism and his pro-capitalist beliefs, uh, the difference is today that the people who run Disney use social media to scream to the whole world that the decision has been made for political reasons. Disney is in the process of taking the woke scalpel to the Jungle Cruise. Trader Sam is out because he might offend certain people. Every grown-up in the room realizes that Trader Joe is not a representation of reality. It is meant as a funny, silly caricature. It is no more base in racism than every Disney, Disney caricature of an out-of-touch white American dad. The next time I ride Jungle Cruise, I will not be thinking about the gloriously entertaining puns of the skippers. I'll be thinking about Disney's political agenda. That's a mood killer. Now, there's literally nothing wrong with this opinion. Um, but you see all the people. Then don't go there. Start your own theme park. Um, you know, and, and just everybody in, in Twitter, uh, you know, is shredding this dude um you know because why you know it's it's death by a thousand paper cuts look i don't want to give disney any money period um but i understand that a lot of people still want to go there and you know kids they don't need to fight our battles for us um but you know the idea that uh, all these losers like Patricia Arquette and all this stuff dogpiling this guy, not very inclusive um, or uh, accepting. He writes on, Disney proclaims that Splash Mountain must change because of its association with Song of the South. Disney owns Splash Mountain, so it can do what it wants. But if Disney screams at the top of its corporate voice, which is pretty loud, that ch it's changing it due to appease certain political point of view. Now, every time I look at the ride, I'm thinking about politics. He's not wrong. Now, some people are reducing it to the ridiculous or saying, ah, uh, it's Disney Park. It's about the kids. Um, and these people are usually adults who are saying this. Um, yeah, well, adults are the ones that pay for the tickets. Uh, adults are the ones that enjoy many of the nostalgic rides. Uh, do you think Epcot's for the kids? Uh, there's a lot of the Disney experience that is not for kids. You know, it's, it's still kid friendly, but it's not like tailored for them. The same with the Pirates of the Caribbean. Disney has made significant changes to Pirates of the Caribbean over the years. Whether Disney caved to political pressure or really thought the alterations were necessary is irrelevant. Pirates used to be one of my favorite attractions. My family would always ride it first on our first day at the Magic Kingdom. Now we don't even ride it uh, every trip. When my family rides Pirates now, each of us... Uh, each of the change scenes takes us out of the illusion because they reminded us of reality and politics that forced the changes. Disney World is going to lose us as customers if it continues down this path. I do not want to have Disney World taken away from us because Disney cares more about politics than happy guests. This should matter to the people of Orlando because if Disney drives away customers like me, Orlando loses money. I can't. T I can take my tourist dollars elsewhere. I would rather keep spending them in Orlando, but people like me feel more and more excluded by Disney's decisions. The parks are less fun because immersion and thus the joy is taking a backseat to politics. Disney, please return the values of your vision to Walt. The customer experience should be the core of your business model. Immersion should not be sacrificed at the altar of political correctness and appeasing the Twitter mob. Well, he's absolutely correct. Now, I'm a little more relaxed on like, look, if there's something on, you know, a particular ride that is, you know, just really not aged well, I'm fine with you swapping it out. What they should do, though, to maintain immersion is, you know, they could do both of these things, right? They could update things on rides that are no longer, you know, that haven't aged well or something like that. But, you know, maybe don't make a huge PR statement about it. People wouldn't even notice most likely. Um, and it wouldn't break immersion then. The idea that, you know, I'm going to see a Disney princess with a full sleeve of tattoos, that's immersion breaking. I 100% agree with his position on that. Um, and you see Twitter, of course, um, when Pirates of the Caribbean is trending, but not for pirate shanties, but some loser not being able to bring himself to ride the Disney because he got rid of uh, a particular animatronic that was crying. Um, 
th these are people that never go to Disney, by the way. They, they, they don't have any money. Um, they, they don't, they don't spend it in Disney. They spend all day on, on Twitter talking about how other things are bad. Um, you know, I think the t visible tattoos and stuff like that are, um, that's a very viable, uh, complaint updating a ride f for this or that again can be done without breaking the immersion of your customers. I think that it's a, a straw man to to paint this guy as Twitter is saying like, oh, he's mad because he can't enjoy this this racist old thing. That's not what he's saying. He's saying that when there's a huge PR push about you, quote unquote, updating something, it does break immersion. For somebody that goes to the park constantly, it's going to be they're going to look for that. They're going to say, well, I wonder what's changed about this ride. Or now I'm looking for what they updated on this ride. And it is immersion breaking. Having a, you know, a, a Disney uh, what a prince with an emo haircut and wearing black lipstick. Um, no, you're not there to express yourself. You're there to add to the experience. And I realize that that's harsh, but if you don't like it, then don't work at Disney. It's pretty simple. Just like all these people that if you don't like it, don't buy it or build your own theme park. I mean, certainly... That if you want to go express yourself, you can go stand on a street corner and do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. I agree with Jonathan, uh, and we'll talk to you again real soon.